Hello, everyone. Hi. In the prior segment, Christ has been traveling through Samaria to come to Jerusalem for the festival, and he has arrived at the festival, and in the process of doing festival, he cures a man who has been lame for 38 years. And that, of course, causes a major problem because... It's on the Sabbath. It's on the Sabbath. <laughs> for one thing. Yes. It, it, it must be deliberate that it so often happens on the Sabbath. <laughs> so we'll pick up the story at verse 15 about the reaction of the Jews, first of all, from 15 down to verse 29. The man went away and told the Jews it was Jesus that made him sound in health. So on this account, the Jews went persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things during Sabbath. But he answered them, My father has kept working until now, and I keep working. On this account, indeed, the Jews began seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. Therefore, in answer, Jesus went on to say to them, Most truly I say to you, the Son cannot do a single thing of his own initiative, but only what he beholds the Father doing. For whatever things that one does, these things the Son also does in like manner. For the Father has affection for the Son, and shows him all the things he himself does, and he will show him works greater than these, in order that you may marvel. For just as the Father raises the dead up and makes them alive, so the Son also makes those alive whom he wants to. For the Father judges no one at all, but he has committed all the judging to the Son, in order that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He that does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most truly I say to you, he that hears my word and believes him that sent me has everlasting life, and he does not come into judgment but has passed over from death to life. Most truly I say to you, the hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who have given heed will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted also to the Son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to do judging, because son of man he is. Do not marvel at this, because the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who did good things to a resurrection of life, and those who practiced vile things to a resurrection of judgment. What gets Jesus in trouble? Not only the Sabbath, but something he said in answer to their objection about the Sabbath. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. My father is working until now and I am working. Mm -hmm. Why is this horrifying that the Jews would want to kill him because he's calling God his own father? Well, didn't the Jews think of God as their father? Yes, collectively. And mm -hmm. only collectively. Mm -hmm. So for someone to say, my father of God, well they jump to the appropriate conclusion. He's making yeah. himself equal with God somehow in a way that no mm -hmm. Jew could. Yeah. You know, even the way he speaks, the way Jesus speaks is so different from like any of the prophets of the past or, you know, that the, the intimacy is certainly there in the way he speaks of his relationship with God. Different than any prophet. So there reaction is <laughs> inevitable because yeah. Jews didn't talk this way, not even rabbis or high priests, mm -hmm. not to mention prophets. So the authority of the Son is the subject of the subsequent verses. But, but notice again that the designations here in verse 17, my father, and then mm -hmm. throughout 19, right to the end, 
an alternation of father and son. Mm -hmm. And that's fairly unusual, and not, not, not just in the Gospel of John. Normally, the Son, as opposed to the Son of Man or the Son of God. Now, yes, Son of God occurs once in verse 25, when he says, the hour is coming and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And then in verse 27, when he's talking about why he's been given the authority to judge, he doesn't use the phrase there, Son of God. He says, the Father has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. That's the mm -hmm. only time here he uses that expression, which mm -hmm. is his habitual self-designation in the Synoptic Gospels. Mm -hmm. But even in that contrast, there's, well, it's like Paul, isn't it, in Acts, when he says that God has appointed a day for judgment and he's going to appoint as the judge a man. Mm -hmm. whom he has appointed. So, yeah, so he is, is son of God and also son of man. This is what Christians traditionally mean by the incarnation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't become son of God when he comes to the earth, as many people out there seem to think, that yeah. somehow, no, he didn't have a pre-existence and he certainly wasn't God or the son of God before. No, it's not his earthly designation. He was the son of God. Mm -hmm. What is it that Isaiah says? Uh, that famous a, messianic a, passage a son has been given you he says right. a, a child has been born to us mm -hmm. a son has been given mm -hmm. so he was the son of god prior to the incarnation and he's the son of man now and forever that's the part that's missing when you're a jehovah's witness he's yeah. not son of man while he's on earth only yeah he's still the son of man because he retains his earthly body mm -hmm. we can't get our minds around this but nevertheless it's what scripture indicates I would so, say so his return is, is also as man again. He returns as a glorified man in a glorified human body, mm -hmm. which is our destiny too. Mm -hmm. So the designations throughout, most consistently, are Father, my Father, mm -hmm. and the Son. And I believe by the time you get, well, verse 23, for instance, the, well, let's read from verse 22 again. The Father judges no one, but he has given all the judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine if, if you're a witness and you substitute your words mm -hmm. in there. For the... That they may all honor Jesus, yeah. just as they honor Jehovah. Jehovah. Would that stop you in your tracks, if you were a Jehovah's Witness? Well, it did me, because Christians mm -hmm. used this argument on me mm -hmm. when I was dealing with evangelicals, the better trained ones. They would say, this, with this honoring Jesus as they honor the Father, yeah. do, you, do you believe that yourself, they would say yeah. to me? Yeah. And I would, I would feel uncomfortable with this. Yeah, because you, you would feel somewhat like, well, not as much. <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> you're not supposed to as much when you're a witness. So not in the same way. Mm -hmm. But that's what it says, and they took yeah. it that way. Yeah. So, Son of Man, Son of God, the Son most frequently, and as for God, Father. Mm -hmm. No tetragram anywhere. And so in the next segment, we want to look at the witnesses for Jesus, because yeah. now Jesus is asked to, to supply witnesses to his own authority. And, mm -hmm. and it's interesting that the witnesses for Jesus are well, we can enumerate them, and there's no no tetragram, and therefore I think when you read verses 30 to 47 in context, you realize that the witness of John, that is the Gospel of John, is in the direction of Jesus' authority. It's never in the, in the sense that you would understand it as a Jehovah's Witness, to the name Jehovah and to his yeah, unique he's authority. He's pointing to Jesus. I know you want to link something to her. Yes, well, I just want to remind you that we should link, <laughs> that we're going to link um, a series that David did on the deity of Christ in the early church. So we'll put that on the screen, and you can just press it, and it will open. And then next time, witnesses to Jesus. <laughs>